Greetings goblins and welcome to Elder Goblin Games, where we explore topics about D&D and other bespoke tabletop roleplaying games. For today's topic, we're going to look at the other side of the GM screen and focus on player character motivations. Maybe you're like me and creating a new character can be a daunting experience. You're not sure where to start and you don't want to end up with a gimmicky one trick pony type of character. It's easy to do. You lean too hard into one single mechanic or an idea and you end up playing Drizzt Duerden another edgy dark elf ranger with trust issues. So how do we avoid making flimsy or bland characters? Well, I've got one word for you that I find is an excellent starting place. Motivations. Now don't go anywhere yet, GMs, because motivations can apply to NPCs and especially to your villains. Motivations are an excellent place to start when thinking up a character concept that you want to play, especially if you're in the kind of game where you're making a lot of in-character decisions. And one of the beauties about starting with motivations is that they can work for any class, ancestry, and most backgrounds. So unless you're playing a slave from Dark Sun, you can go ahead and get the ball rolling on that character concept even before you know what class you're playing. Now, before we go forward, I want to throw out two disclaimers. First, I'm going to use a very loose version of a human psyche model known as the Enneagram, mostly because it spotlights nine different common motivations as its primary focus. However, this is definitely not an Enneagram video, even if it may feel like it. I am not an expert and there's much, much more to the subject that I'm going to cover here, including things like subtypes and wings. And if you are familiar with it, you'll probably disagree with some of the examples I use, but that's fine. We can argue it out in the comments. Second, I'm bending the definitions and the names of some of these types to better fit role-playing games. Some of the definitions make a lot more sense to real-life people, but are too nebulous to use as role-playing game prompts. Definitely don't quote me on these definitions. They have been altered to better suit the topic of this video. Okay, so now that we have all that out of the way, let's dive into the nine motivations. Number one, the Crusader. The Crusader is motivated by a sense of justice. They have a strong moral code and will do whatever it takes to uphold the balance of that code. They can be a perfectionist in the pursuit of doing what they believe is right and can oftentimes be seen as inflexible because of this motivation. Play a crusader if you want to follow a strict set of laws, fight evil and corruption at all costs, and be held to a higher standard of integrity. Examples I'm going to use for crusaders are Dalinar Colin from the Stormlight Archives, Hermione Granger, and Captain America. And because I've been rereading the Stormlight Archives, I'll focus on Dalinar for a second and the way that this simple motivation to do what's right affects every choice he makes. Dalinar exemplifies the Crusader because of his strict adherence to his own personal philosophies. At the beginning of his story, he fails his brother the king in his hour of need because he wasn't following the codes that the king had specifically charged him with. Dalinar then becomes obsessed with the codes, forcing his soldiers and even his sons to follow the letter of the law even when it doesn't make sense to them. Dalinar's sense of doing what's right leads him to become a moral perfectionist. And just as a reminder, whenever you're considering these motivations, remember to think about what choices or events may have shaped this motivation within your character. This is an easy way to stretch that motivation into a logical background. Number two, the advisor. The advisor is motivated by sense of worth or having value in a desire to be needed by others. They want to know that those who they surround themselves with need them, and so they focus on supporting others rather than trying to shine on their own. Advisors are self-sacrificing, generous, and most importantly, helpful. However, just as a crusader has a dark side that can turn them rigid, a shadow advisor can use the influence they have over others to turn manipulative, preying on those who lean on their support. They become the devil whispering on the shoulders of their friends. Play an advisor because you want to support the party, stay out of the spotlight, and see the goals of those around you met. Examples of advisors are Samwise Gamgee, Peeta from The Hunger Games, and Hagrid from Harry Potter. In The Lord of the Rings, Frodo is the reluctant hero of the story, but it's his advisor Samwise Gamgee that truly sees his friend's quest to the bitter end. In the movie adaptation, Frodo even says he wouldn't have got far without Sam. And by the end, we see Sam exemplify the role of the loyal helper when he says, I can't carry your burden for you, but I can carry you. Moving on to the third motivation, the Achiever. The Achiever's main motivations are to accomplish great deeds and to gain renown. Achievers are driven, ambitious, and confident. Opposite of the Advisor, the Achiever wants to distinguish themselves 
be the center of attention, and be admired by others. This can lead to them becoming overly concerned with self-image and fame. Roleplay an achiever because you want to be flashy, daring, and the best at whatever you do. Achiever examples. Boromir, Draco Malfoy, and Doctor Strange. In the MCU, Stephen Strange is driven by his own sense of ego, striving to be the best at whatever he does. He turns down operating on average cases that lesser men could do, because there's no glory in being ordinary. To Strange, his ambitions of achieving greatness are everything, to the detriment of everyone around him. It's a lesson he doesn't really grasp until after he loses his mentor. It's not about you. Moving right along, number four, the artist. An artist's motivations might be the most esoteric of the nine types, but most often they are seeking truth, beauty, and self-worth. Different from the way an advisor seeks finding worth in others, the artist seeks to find that worth within themselves. They can be talented bards, full of creativity and wanderlust, seeking deeper meaning and purpose for their lives. They have a deep fear of insignificance and desire to be fully understood and authentically their unique selves. Roleplay an artist if you want to create beauty, find truth, and be eccentric. Examples of artists are Loki, Luna Lovegood, and Powder or Jinx from Arcane. In the MCU, Loki is always in search of his glorious purpose. He often feels like an outsider, and longs to find his true place within the universe. What exactly makes a Loki a Loki? Independence, authority, style. His motivation to discover his true self leads to a lot of soul searching and introspection. In fact, nearly every version of himself is an outcast or a misfit. Because we, my friends, have but one part to play. The god of outcasts. Number five, the investigator. Investigators are motivated by competency through understanding and mastery. They hoard knowledge and skills like others hoard gold. They are cerebral scholars, innovative specialists, and secretive, rec and secretive recluses. Recluses? They are motivated by a desire to be capable problem solvers no matter what scenario arises. However, their capacity for a wide range of subjects can stem from a fear of being useless. They can be insightful and curious, but on the other side of that coin, they can become overly logical and detached. Role play an investigator if you want to seek knowledge, understanding, and ask the deeper questions of life. Examples of investigators are Sherlock, Spock, and Vision. Let's look to Spock as a great example of an investigator. He views the world and species he encounters throughout his adventures through a lens of logic, knowledge, and above all else, understanding. Spock constantly attempts to arbitrate problems with an almost robotic sense of neutrality, pushing his human emotions aside in lieu of his logical Vulcan sensibilities. His motivations are to analyze all data available to him in order to find the most reasonable outcomes. Number six, the Guardian. Guardians are loyalists, motivated by safety and security. They tend to focus on worst case scenarios as a kind of defense mechanism against potential threats. This can cause them to have a complicated relationship with authority. They can be fearful or trustworthy, but above all else are cautious. This motivation of security often ties them to a group or a person that they trust as a support, and they tend to be extremely loyal to that group or persons. Roleplay a guardian because you want to be part of a tight-knit group, be prepared to meet any challenge, and fight for what you believe. Examples of Guardians are Kaz Brecker, Wolverine, and Kaladin Stormblessed. In Kaladin's early life, he loses a lot of people who were close to him. Because of this, and his background as a surgeon, he's always focused on ways he can protect those around him. He spends most of his money and time planning on what might be coming, and is even willing to defy the highest authority for the sake of his friends. He does whatever it takes to ensure the security of those around him, even if it means sacrificing himself. Number 7. The Fanatic. The Fanatic's motivations are contentment and adventure. They are enthusiastic, spontaneous, and optimistic, always seeking new adventure and greener pastures. They approach life with curiosity and wonder and seek adventure wherever they can find it. Fanatics have many skills and interests, though they tend to change as quickly as they come. Roleplay a Fanatic if you want to seek freedom, bring optimism, and explore new horizons. Examples of Fanatics are the Weasley Twins, Marion Pippin, and Jack Sparrow. If you need excellent examples of fanatics, look no further than Mary and Pippin. They bring optimism and hope to whatever room they enter, and their spirits are almost never broken. They enjoy their comforts more than most, and don't shy away from an adventure, even if it brings them directly into harm's way. 
You need people of intelligence on this sort of mission. Quest. Thank you. Number eight, the challenger. A challenger's motivation is freedom and forging their own destiny. A challenger seeks to prove their strengths and is willing to go to extreme lengths to resist the control of others. They are confrontational by nature and never shy away from a challenge. Challengers are vigorous, strong-willed, and unafraid to speak their minds to anyone. Examples of challengers are The Hound, Roy Kent, and Arya Stark. I can think of no better example of a challenger than Sandor Clegane. Go on, hit me. Hit me hard. He's a straight talker, tough as nails, exudes confidence, and doesn't take no for an answer. You can have one of them. Two. Every time he's on the screen, he's challenging authority with his bountiful vocabulary and doing exactly what he intends to do. He uses his own self-confidence as a shield against anyone who would seek to control him and lets nothing stand in his way. Roleplay a challenger if you want to be strong, outspoken, and self-reliant. Finally, last but not least, number nine, the mediator. The mediator's motivation is to sow harmony within the world. They are deeply receptive, conflict avoidant, stable, and self-effacing. Mediators are more connected to others than they are themselves and are liked by nearly everyone they meet because of their peaceful disposition. Genuine, good-natured, and calm, mediators tend to be easily trusted and bring people together. Roleplay a mediator if you want to be a peaceful presence connected to others and a wise referee. Examples of mediators. General Iroh, Harry Potter, and Jon Snow. Uncle Iroh brings wisdom, harmony, and tea to whoever he meets. Whether it's his nephew who he supports or the enemies he's chasing, he's always thoughtful, optimistic, and humble reciting wise words to whoever will listen. Iroh is motivated by a sense of harmony, which he imparts to all those who encounter him. Well, thank you guys for listening. I know this was kind of a long one, but I had a lot of fun making it and hopefully you enjoyed it as well. I hope you gleaned something useful or at least walked away with some inspiration for your next character. Just as a reminder, we did a giveaway on the NPC quick hack video, and uh, I left some comments and still haven't heard any response from our winners. So go check those comments on that video and see if you were one of the winners. Thanks for watching. Consider liking and subscribing. And also there's a little bell. Make sure that you have all selected and not personalized. That way YouTube doesn't hide some of my videos from you. Sneaky little YouTube. I'm watching you. So as always, remember, make mistakes, choose chaos, and most importantly, have fun. And though the road be long, we'll weather out the storm. So gather round the fire warm, we'll head for hearth and home. We'll head for hearth and home.